going on everybody my name is mj the future thank you for joining me on my channel today today i will be continuing my reason revisited series i believe i am on episode number four but due to some heat i've been feeling from reason gang i'm gonna be skipping some of my progression and jump right into the mixing and reason topic um actually let me show you what i mean um geo says respect mg always dropping that good stuff i know you use harrison to mix your tracks i think it'd be cool if you do a small eight to ten track mix session as you would approach it in reason 10 i've been waiting for something like it much appreciated if you can either way i respect and love your work great stuff so salute to geo and then stefan he is the one that wanted me to get um reason the longest i mean he's been watching my channel way before reason came about and he says dang i enjoy pretty much all the hot topic discussions thank you for what you're doing for the community i would love to see how you produce a track and mix in reason like fl studio thanks a lot peace all righty then and then candace says i second that motion i need you to close the sale <laughs> i guess because i talk up reason so much um i'm going to play you a demonstration of what i've made so far i think it'd be easier to show the generalized topics of mixing and reason with smaller tracks than instead of having the rack and the sequencer too full to really follow um not just for you guys but for me <laughs> so let's go ahead and play this i'm going to break it down explain what every element is and then we'll go from there So this particular track, it's called Don't Act Silly. It is using Serato Sample, which is a VST. Um, I went ahead and got the screenshot of it. And so if you drag and drop a VST down here from instruments, as you see, most of mine got screenshots now, but they don't by default. So you just drag your VST into Reason, click on Open, and whatever you have in your window, you can make the screenshot by clicking on Screenshot. So I click Screenshot, get out, boom, it's the screenshot now. And it'll stay that way in your browser as well whenever it refreshes. So yeah, this is a sample that actually this producer on Instagram sent me a lot of stuff. He sent me his drum kit he's working on and he sent me a folder of like 50 samples. So let me shout him out real quick. Yeah, so this is Noah Burley. He's a musician. He's a jazz guitar player. His ear for music is crazy. Um, Next up we have Redrum. Redrum's real simple. It's just a simple pattern. And like I said, I'm alternating velocities to kind of give it that bounce. And that's what I was telling people about like how drums sound in uh, Reason versus FL Studio. Like if you piano roll this same pattern, it won't have that same, huh? Can't explain it, but it is what it is. So the next one is going to be the bass line. I'm actually not using Hyperbottom. <laughs> I'm using Wonder Bass for this particular scenario. And I have this thing, it's called a Reason Player. It's called Scales and Chords. So since Serato tells us what the key of our sample is in, or it tries to most of the time, I set this to that and I filtered notes, meaning so when I'm playing on my MIDI controller, if I don't hear sound, that means there's, uh, that key is not in the scale of E minor. So I use that to kind of train my ear or, you know, try to play the bass line out and it worked pretty good next one up is called banished lead now this synth right here is an re it's called jps harmonic synthesizer um i don't think any of you should get it it's mine now i don't want any i don't want to hear these sounds in anyone's beats but mine <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Uh, they modeled it, they say, after a rare lo-fi synthesizer from back in the day. Um, it has very basic sounds that are are all synthesized. But I was tweaking this particular patch a little bit and turned the sequencer on. And I tell you, boy, uh, man, this this, this thing, this right, thing here? right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's also following the same story, except for I'm actually using chord mode. So when I jump into my sequencer, you're going to notice I'm only playing three keys. And what's really dope about Reason, when you're finished and you're you're sure you're gonna stick to those chords they have this send to track feature which will mute what you played and put the actual chords that it generated into your project and that's why i said reason really needs ghost channels because if you could dump the chords from this module after you perform them, if you're doing voice editing, you can see the chords behind your voice and adjust your melody of your voice um, correctly. Speaking of voices, this is just a mixed channel and it has my voice on it. And I am using VSTs as an insert here. This is the first time I've done that. And I use these two because I wanted my voice in pocket, how I'm used to hearing it. So the CL1B for rap voice or, you know, just male voice or male vox is really dope. And then the uh, Valley People has a de preset. Unfortunately, 
fortunately in Reason and many other programs, soft tube presets do not show up. And then in the sequencer itself, if I go back to my voice, which is here, I kind of chopped and screwed it. If you see comp edit, Reason is really brilliant. It like it does the comps for you even if you're not trying to comp, like it'll keep it there for you in case you wanna go back to an old one. So basically I kinda cut and paste the, the best parts of that so-called performance and um, I changed the ending. So I recorded it twice and the beginning of one sounded better than the other so I copied and pasted that and then- I don't know what I'm doing. But anyway, <laughs> And then I said, well, you know, I use Melodyne. Let me try that. So Reason does have a built-in monophonic pitch editor. And I tried to scale these or put them in key. I changed the key of them. When you select all the keys at the top, I set it to the project key. And then I was like, that doesn't sound good. I don't know what I'm doing. So I kept moving it down and I found a key that sounded good. I don't know. I got something that I liked. I honestly have no idea how I got that far yet. Yeah, I'm going to get nice, but that that's to be continued. So for now, that's the track. Don't act silly. Don't you act silly. Don't you act silly. And that format on my voice is part of me editing the pitch. Don't you act silly. Don't you act silly. I identified the tracks that I used. The next thing I want to do is send some of these tracks to the mixer if they're not already. And this particular example is going to be the drums. In Redrum, I'm using 10 different sounds. However, if I tab it over, Redrum only has one output, which is the main for the whole drum sequencer, going to something called Mix. Mix is the actual volume fader that shows up in the mixer channel. So you'll see Redrum here. If I scroll down, you'll see the mixer channel for it. And what's dope about that is if you move it here, it moves it up there. Very dope. If I want to solo it, I can solo it here. It'll solo it up there. So everything in Reason talks to each other pretty flawlessly. So when you have like it all shrunk down in a bird's eye view, you can see all your mixers, see all your meters, and kind of start mixing your track from this view if you want the mixer hidden while you're looking at different elements. Speaking of these mix channels while I'm on it though, let me add a new channel so you can see how that happens. So in older Reason um, versions, it was a little bit trickier to get everything set up on the mixer, but this is automatic. So if I double click on, let's say Dr. Rex, it's automatically gonna create Dr. Rex and this automatically is gonna create its mix channel. So when I go back to the mixer, Dr. Octorex shows up. Very simple, very easy. And if you want, you can highlight the mix, bring it down to a different part of your track, and it'll move the container with the actual instrument itself. And then you can expand, collapse, if you turn it around, expand, collapse, all the different options for that track still there. And also on the mix channel itself, you can do things too, like show insert effects. So if Dr. Rex, I wanted to use a VST, let's say like this, I can drag it into this box here where it turns orange with the plus sign and this will become contained within mix, but it'll only affect Dr. Rex rather than typically you put it on the end and it'll stay on the screen the whole time. You don't need to, this shows up in the mix and then it's volume and it's output is controlled by the fader with Rex. Very dope, very simple to do, but that's just for demonstration. So I'm gonna right click on Rex, I'm gonna delete device and tracks, delete all in group, because I'm getting rid of it. So now when I go back, boom, it's gone. So very simple. Now with Redrum, let's make this really easy. Um, I made a pattern here and I have a step sequencer. So what I want to do is right click on, doc on this particular Redrum. And then what I want to choose is copy pattern to track. So every last single sound I use will have its own MIDI sequence once it's dumped or bounced. Boom. So it's no longer just running anymore. Now that it's here, I can go back to this window, go to window helpers, show tool window, which is F8 on your keyboard. All right, so on this little tool icon at the very bottom, extract notes to lanes. We're gonna highlight or choose explode, hit move. Now everything gets its own track. Now you would wanna do that so I can arrange it. For instance, my sequence has a part where there's a double clap at the end. I can now select that double clap and move it to bar four or bar eight or wherever else I really want it. And then each individual sound allows you to assign it to like an individual groove. So now everything's on its own track in terms of the sequencer. However, these tracks are still all coming out of one output. So what I have to do is hit tab on my keyboard to turn Reason's rack around. And I have to route all of these to the mixer, but you can't just do that. So what you need is something to hold them. And these are called mixes. So I'm gonna right click, create a mix channel. Right click, create a mix channel. And basically you take one and you plug it into the input. Take two, plug
plug it into the input. And then when you go back to the mixer, you're gonna see I have redrum channel one, redrum channel two. So if I hit tab again, redrum channel one is gonna be kick and redrum channel two is probably my one of my snares, right? And you would go through and pretty much just rename everything after you routed it. All right, so I got everything routed and renamed, as you can see here, kick, snare, shaker, but I ran into a new problem, right? I have all these mix channels now, so now when it's time to kind of identify and find your track, it might get kind of overwhelming, especially if you have more than one redrum or more than one instrument that you're busting out. Luckily, there are some indicators here, like you can click here to find your track in the sequencer, which is on redrum. So that's SEQ, or you can click here and kind of find a redrum in the rack. So those kind of shortcuts right there on the track names is very helpful if you're in the mixer. However, let's clean this up more. So since redrum is the one being wired to all of these, I can highlight redrum or just click on it. It'll turn blue with this blue outline. Click and hold and drag it on over. And what it's gonna do is drag itself and everything it's connected to to its own screen. So for a lot of lo-fi producers, hip-hop producers, even trap, if we're not using a whole bunch of different drum modules or busting out octo rexes and kong and things like that we can just dedicate one side of the screen to drums this way even when you're mixing it when it's playing you can look at these meters instead of going to the mixer so when i play it there's another problem they don't X. it's too loud or it's doubling and that's because this pattern is still enabled so it runs anytime you hit spacebar or play in reason so we're going to disable that so it's only the level of redrum Delay. don't you X in there. don't you X Very cool. So now once you turn that off, if you're using Redrum, you can go ahead and start mixing things and making things happen. So I'm gonna minimize rack and sequencer and just focus on the mixer for a second. So here on the mixer, I have quite a few tracks. I have my kicks, I have my Redrum rack. What I might do is move these as well. I wanna move these to the end of the mixer. So it's all of those. And what I'm gonna do is hold shift, highlight them all. So click one, hold shift, select another one and right click and channel color, change it to a different color. So maybe sky blue. Cool, so it's easy for me to identify easier on the eyes. Drums can be by themselves. I guess bass would be next in the order of progression. So change that to another color, uh, still blue. I need to get my color well out. That's what I need to do. All right, and then sample, we'll call it what it is. I'll call it a pad because it's chopping a pad. And then my Vox Silly is fine. And then my lead is actually an ARP. So I'm gonna name that an ARP. And I only use that in the intro, so that's fine. And the Vox is probably really important, so I'm gonna move that before the drums. That's just personal taste. The rest of them you can kind of color. The color scheme can be whatever you want. Th th this is struggle right here. But once you have that and you have it set up, you have the colors you like, everything is easy on the eyes. But what I'm gonna do is bust these drums now. So I'm gonna highlight, open hi-hat all the way to kick. Redrum rack we're not using anymore because it no longer has an output. So you can kind of just turn that down just in case it gets automated or runs again. I'm gonna highlight all these, right click again, and this time i'm going to route to new output bus and that creates a bus for us let's make it a color that kind of stands out so we're using sky blue let's do steel blue and then of course the outputs all go to that particular bus one and what that allows you to do is to go to inserts put a bus compressor on just the drums or just uh, you know you can automate the drum itself or the volume fader for all the drums at once don't excellent don't excellent don't you excellent don't you excellent and then speaking of bus compressors, right here you're gonna see right above these eight sends. Eight sends are basically, in my template, there's a two reverbs, a delay and an echo kind of thing. So one through four is already routed. But right above that, there's edit inserts. So right on the drum bus where it says edit inserts, we're gonna click on that. It's gonna show us our bus track and our rack. And now you can drag and drop compressors into this. So under effects, you can use anything you want. I might actually do something different. I might put this automatic retro transformer on instead to kind of make it more lo-fi. But let's bypass that for now. That's more taste. That's more. I just want to make sure I cover the basics so that you understand how to do that. Edit inserts if you want to go to that. And if you're not in the mixer and you want to do that, remember all of these expands. In special cases, you might actually want to add an insert to your master channel. I want to show you that real quick too. You'll notice this section here um, with the four rotaries that are empty. These correspond to different combinators that Reason has. A combinator is basically a container for multiple effects, modules, or routings. So in the case of mastering or insert effects, um, Reason has a lot of uh, presets that we can use. Kind of like those Easy Mix series, right? Like, um, I don't know, like Toontrack. 
Soundtrack has it, where there's like different presets to put on a piano or on a drum bus. That's what these access, and then these particular knobs adjust the different macros for that combination. But on the mastering side, I have something called Gentle Mastering, and basically you click on that open folder, you go through the M-Class Mastering patches, so I'll do the default, and then of course it has this loudness curve, EQ boost, compression, master gain. That's the four macros they chose for this particular preset. But if we go to Edit Inserts, it's going to take us to our master section, which is kind of like a mixed channel as well, but for everything at once. And what I want to do is actually bypass these because I'm not going to master into it until I get my mix right. But what I actually wanted to show you is that it has a stereo imager. So what does that mean? Um, that means I can actually mix in mono with this. So I want to play this and turn both of these knobs down to mono. And you see there's a low band and high band, which is really useful. Don't you Turn it on. Now you can mix in mono. And you would notice me mixing in mono in my Harrison videos. So you can do that in Reason too. However, I'm gonna bypass that as well because I went to that Reason store and they told me not to, the Reason shop on the website. And I started some trials on a few plugins, in particular the Selic Deesser and Selic Gain. So I'm gonna drag that in. And this one just has a mono knob. And this way we can make a shortcut to um, make this mono. I actually seen that in the tutorial that Propeller Heads put together. So I'm gonna play this. Excellent. Excellent. Don't Excellent. Don't very dope, very ill. So that's mastering inserts. It's all within this master section container. That's the key takeaway. Because if we do something else like this, add another reverb and put it under the container, Reason's still pretty smart. It'll automatically route it. So I'm gonna do a haul. And when I scroll up to my inserts, you can see my haul effect is now insert number five and I can turn five one on the track, so I wanna send that effect. Really dope, really intuitive. Like I said, guys, we don't have to do a whole bunch of routing or a whole bunch of trying to figure out cables, and that's one of the things that I kind of dread. Yes. 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 So anyway, <laughs> now that we got that and we got this in mono, I just gotta remember to take it out of mono. Let's go ahead and set these levels. So all these tracks is my bus, so I'm gonna turn my bass down, and I'm just going in the video, I'm just gonna show you how I would approach the drums. So I'm gonna turn my voice down and just have drums. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and turn all of these down and start with the kick and go through this one by one. Cool. So in the insert channel, we have a few things we can do. We can start at the top, turn the compressor on, make it a fast compressor. These are gain reduction knobs, so I don't need that much gain reduction. The release, you want to time with the yellow light, so maybe a faster release. Ratio, I'm going to leave at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is around 4 to 1, which is fine. Gate I can do too. Turn the range all the way up. And you see the gate fill up. The gate works backwards, kinda. You turn the threshold all the way up and back it up, you'll start to hear it. Now I'm missing my ghost kick. I'll make it fast. Fast release as well. Now on a high pass and low pass, I might be able to low pass it. It is a kick after all. Up this frequency a little bit. Now with the low filter, I can increase that, but I might prefer to use the breakout. So this little icon right above the low pass filter, that'll bring up our EQ and what we've done so far. I'm gonna turn EQ on. This is that low filter. That's where my kick is. I might put a bump there. And now I know what that frequency is, I can adjust the gain individually. And then just move on to the next one. Much more of the same. And this will let you reshape the snare actually. Very dope. But I'm not getting any compression on it. There we go. So that's the snare. What's the next ones? Now this is tricky because these are supposed to be panned. I know I'm going to pan them left. I just make sure that volume is good. And I'm going to pan the crash to the opposite side. And it's a momentary element, so I might turn that up a little bit louder. Let's go ahead and put a high pass filter on that. I don't know what I'm doing. And I might put a gate on it as well. Cool, now we can shape the decay of it. I like it. And then I could turn an insert on for echo on that.
that's going to need some reverb. So let's use that dark reverb on that. And let's high pass it as well. All right, and then the regular clap. Put a room verb on it. So I know I'm going to have to pan these just a little bit. The one that's momentary, I'll put left. Right, the next one, the hi hats. These should be opposite of the shakers, so I'll move these left. And these definitely need gates. And let's send these to a room together, the actual bus. They say don't do that, but I can. Now let's go to our mastering rack and take that mono off and see if we didn't ruin anything. I like it. This might be too much reverb on that snare though because of this room. Actually, it's the clap. So the clap won't need that reverb. I'll put the clap in this one. Very cool. And then the other elements, I'll just turn up little by little. Let's put our mono back on. That pad, I know I'm gonna high pass sin, low pass it. Maybe some echo or delay. Little pass on the bass. Alright. Let's take it out of mono and see what happens. sure my mix comp has the right reduction on it now. And that's pretty much it. I mean, as far as using Reason to set up the mixer and get your mix started and using a lot of the stuff that you already have available to you. Like I'm just doing this, like it's just free flowing. It wasn't like uh, I was making uh, important decisions that I knew I had to make. It just became very uh, intuitive. I wanted to get the side chain bass compression too, but what I'm gonna end up doing is saving that for the next video and I'm doing that with 808 so it makes more sense. But anyway, if you have any comments or questions or concerns about anything that I did here, definitely let me know. This is one of my longer Reason Revisited videos, if not my longest. So I'm pretty sure, depending on my editing process, it might look crazy at some points. But definitely willing to follow up to correct anything if I took a misstep. But I appreciate you guys checking me out. If you're not a subscriber, definitely subscribe. Until next time, guys. Peace.